Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It's Monday. Up and at them. All right. Today is May 13th. And I thought we'd talk about today because it seems to be an, uh, an everlasting question. Is when it comes to mowers, like with your John Deere's at your Lowell's at Home Depot versus a dealer, your Cub Cadets at Tractor Supply versus a dealer, is there a difference? And I've even had people ask me, did MTD make the lower end models for like the big box stores? And then we're going to also talk about when it's a good time to get a deposit from customers and when not to. All right, so stay tuned. So welcome back. My name is Eric. If you didn't already know it, we do the weekday, Monday through Friday. Today is Monday, and it's available on podcast as well. Today we're talking about when is it the right time that you should be asking for a deposit. Now I'm talking, you know, a repair shop. You're trying to make ends meet. You know, you got bills, so forth. There's a A time to ask and there's time not to ask, all right? As you all know, I charge a $45 diagnostic fee because my time is not free. And my customers, when they go to work, they don't work for free either. They get paid. And that's how I explain it to some of my customers is, do you go to your job and work for free or... Are you demanding payment for every minute you spent there? And most of the time, you know, well, I, I'm not going to work for free. Well, then don't expect me to, all right? Jason has spelled it out as well as I have. And the quickest way, and a lot of times I won't even charge a diagnostic fee. If I throw a compression tester on a unit with no overhead valves, and I can't get compression, I just tell them to take it with them. A lot of times they'll say, can I leave it for your scrap iron pile, you know, that maybe you can use parts off from? That's fine, but I'm not giving you anything for it. And a lot of times for those, I don't charge. If it's got overhead valves, yada, 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 like generators and, you know, lawnmowers and so forth, then... Just because I check compression doesn't mean that the valves are out of whack. You know, so if I adjust the valves, I may be able to bring the compression up. So it still may be fixable. So if I just rely on just the one test, and that's compression, with the the gauge, I may be missing out on, you know, something that is repairable reasonably and get a paycheck. So anything with overhead valves, you know, I don't even do a compression check on it. I just tell them it's going to cost you, you know, $45 for me to give a yay or nay. And if I say yay, that 45 goes towards fixing the, the unit. So the 45 diagnostic that you're getting, which normally takes me about 15, 20 minutes to do, honestly, what I end up doing is... If it's fixable, then I start the clock from the minute I started the diagnostic. I I don't run both of them at the same time. I run just the hourly. So the 45 isn't charged. So it may take me an hour and a half to fix the unit. They're billed for an hour and a half a time. They're not billed for an hour and a half a time plus a diagnostic fee. Now, if the end of my diagnostic is not fixed, fixable reasonably then the 45 stays in and whether they decide to come get it or not it's totally up to them on my old customers i don't because they all know they know 
don't bring junk to Eric. Because, <laughs> you know, and we see a lot of it, all right? It's the, it's the ones that I've never met before or never had for a customer before, and I don't know, you know, a lot of those guys, roadside pickups for free, auctions, they think they can get a steal out of it, you know, and get it fixed for a little bit of nothing and then either have it as in their arsenal or resell it. Those folks that I don't see very often or ever, I do ask for the deposit up front, all right? And I do that because if I didn't, I would never get paid. Because if I called that customer and said, look, I did a diagnostic and it's just not worth fixing, they'll just say, well, we just keep it then, hang up. <laughs> and now you've wasted all that time, whether it be half an hour or so forth, looking at their junk. So, if you're doing it nights and weekends, you don't have to charge 45. You can charge 20. But you need something, you know. And if you're working nights and weekends, you still kept your day job that I recommend while you're trying to build the business. So you're not relying solely on that for income. But if you're a shop, you got bills. You got to pay all these bills. And they, they're they going to get paid based on how many hours of work is done in the shop, right? But if you spend 10 hours a week just doing diagnostic and people aren't paying you, that's 10 hours of shop rate that you've lost. Does that make sense? Okay, so on some of the bigger jobs... If I get, and again, this is depending on who the customer is. My good old customers, I don't bother. But if I'm doing an engine swap, transmission swap, you know, anything that is going to require labor intensive, and then the part, what I end up doing is I ask for the cost of the part whether it be a used, brig, used Briggs engine or a used transaxle. And these here, we make sure to let the customer know we cannot guarantee the transmission or the engine, all right? We can guarantee that it's running and driving when we put it on and out the door you go. I call them Frankenstein builds. If you're swapping out engines that are different than what came with the unit, But a lot of times I'll ask for deposit equaling up to the parts. That way if I get, you know, hit, it's, it's going to be just on my labor, not the parts that I put money out for plus the labor. And you got to be careful because you can easily surpass what the mower is worth by throwing used parts on it. If you're throwing new parts on it, it's even more tricky. See, we had a customer drop off a unit that needed a new motor. And he just said, go ahead and order one. No, because the last two times we've dealt with him in the past 10 years, he never come back and paid his bill. No, and that was after repeatedly asking him to. And really, when he brought it, this the motor this last time, I really just tell him, take it right out the door. We're not interested. But I ended up taking it in, and he paid me for my time of telling him he needed a new motor, giving him all the information. And instead of me putting the money out on a brand new engine, because he was thinking the Predator horizontal from Harbor Freight just as easy for you to go buy it make sure you get a warranty on it and then you can pay us to put it together or you can your guys can put it together right but I did get a hundred bucks out of him for getting it tore down and giving him all the information 
So it's going to vary from customer to customer to customer, but it's also going to vary on whether you're doing diagnostic or you're doing major expenses like a, a new engine, a good used engine. Usually, all right, and the other part of this morning segment is on big box store versus your local dealer. Is there a difference in lawnmowers quality-wise? And the answer is yes, there is. Now, I've had people, customers ask because they heard that MTD is making John Deere lawnmowers for the big box stores. Now, John Deere makes all their own mowers. They have their own manufacturing plants. But like years ago when they made the Sabre, a lot of the parts were interchanged with MTD because they sourced the parts from different locations, right? So they got, you know, cheaper parts and a lot of times those cheaper parts were also being used on like mtds but saber was never produced by mtd saber was built by john deere it just they figured out a way to get in get out quickly low end parts and that was one of their biggest money makers they ever had because everybody you know wanted john deere it's the same thing like the old scott's mowers that were produced by you know John Deere. But no, John Deere produces all their own lawnmowers. Is there a difference between what the dealer gets and what the big box store get? Yeah. Yep. The big box store, they want everybody's business. And probably the bulk of their customers are going to be, they want the lower end models without all the frills. And prices, they just determining factor and they have like the S series mowers those are produced mainly for the big box stores your local dealer usually doesn't have access to it and I know in this area our John Deere dealership or it used to even the big box store John Deere's that they're, they're selling at Lowell's and Home Depot would come in on crates to our local John Deere dealership and they would prep it, get it ready, and then they would take it over to Rolls and Home Depot. And then when it comes to warranty work on those John Deere's, it's done by a John Deere dealership. Pros and cons? Well, I know a lot of folks will buy the lower end at home or Lowell's and Home Depot because they offer the military discount, senior discount. Some of them have got like, you know, I have a business account with them where I can save 10%. And then the other is for the low end group, they also offer easy instant credit of 24%, 25% and up. The good, the bad, the ugly is that when it comes time to fix it, doesn't matter whether it's a John Deere at Lowell's or Home Depot or it's a Cub Cadet at Tractor Supply, Lowell's or Home Depot. If it needs work, if it needs warranty work or it's not running the way it's supposed to, you're going to have to take it to your local dealer to get it fixed and I can tell you from history that if you are not one of the regular customers that they sell units to you will just keep being put on the back burner and what do I mean by that I mean the folks that are buying John Deere lawn and garden equipment from that John Deere dealer will always have precedent over you because you went to a big box instead of buying it through their dealership. Is it right? Not really. But, I mean, I think you could understand why. Because they don't want to have one of their customers upset because the machine isn't running yet. Well, because they're fixing a bunch of Lowell's machines. So, they need to take care of their customer first before they step out and take care of somebody else's customer. You know, if you watch some of my earlier videos, like with Tractor Supply, 
we ended up talking with them and, and we talked with Lowell's and Home Depot, Northern Tool, you know, that we weren't going to sell, you know, units. So their customer would always come first. And we did a lot of the warranty repair for them for years. But the clinker is, I'm not willing to lie or fudge numbers or fudge what the real issue was. Most bigger dealerships that have also floor planning, they make the bulk of their money on warranty, right? And the warranty is getting paid for by the manufacturer. So if there's any warranty that comes through, they're going to get paid. They don't have to worry about a customer involved. They're going to get paid by the manufacturer, John Deere itself. If you've watched my videos, you will know that 90 to 95 percent of the crap that comes through that people are demanding warranty is operator error. And that is the customer screwed it up or did something wrong or hit something. All right, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. So you decide in your shop that diagnostic fee and who to charge. Just, you know, I'm letting you know how we do it. If you're a weekend warrior where you're working nights and weekends on it, you could do a little bit less. Even your labor rate could be a little bit less because you don't have the overhead that I have or the bigger dealers have, right? And when it comes to getting some money up front on parts, if it's a major purchase that you have to buy, like used engines in our area right now are running right around $10 a horse. So it's 220 bucks for a 22 horse Briggs V Vanguard. Uh, is the going rate. Transmission is the same way. You're not a bad person if you're asking your customer to come up with just the, the cost of the part to front and then pay the labor on the end. Because that way they've got skin in the game. You don't go out and buy that engine, stick it on there, and then say, oh, I changed my mind. No, we don't. We don't work that way. And when it comes to whether you buy from Home Depot, Lowell's, direct supply, you know, your big box stores versus your local dealer. I think your local dealer will give you better care. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. They don't carry the really low, low-end models that um, the big box stores carry. But if it's got John Deere on it, John Deere made it. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, it's, but they just made the cheapy one that can compete on the lower end for the big box stores. If I'm a homeowner, I wouldn't think twice about Lowell's, Home Depot, or Trash Supply because you're not using it unless you, you're mowing acres of ground per week. But you're not going to get, if you have never used a riding lawnmower, zero turn, or this or that, you're not going to get the one-on-one -on -one explanation and training that you would get from a local dealer. A local dealer most often will make sure it's got full oil, full tank of fuel. Everything's ready to go. It's been checked, prepped, tires are good, deck is leveled, and a lot of times most of them will deliver. And they will have the driver spend some time with you showing you how the unit works. And they will, they have, the dealership has time allotted for that driver to stay there for half an hour with you to work you through the system. And if you have any bugs whatsoever, your dealer will jump on it quicker than the Home Depot or Lowell's or Tractor Supply. So on that note, you guys have a great Monday. We'll see you here bright and early tomorrow morning for the weekday. If you got topics you want me to cover, shoot them at me. Uh, I'm not saying my way is the right way, but it's that deal we talked about yesterday. I try to give as much advice as I can, take what you can use, and leave the rest. All right. Have a great Monday, guys.